Super Dave here with another Super Dave review. Super Dave here with another exciting Masterverse review, and this one is from the Revelation series. It is Evil Lynn, and just check her out. She has a very beautiful face, and this is when Skeletor, of course, had received the power sword and held it aloft and received the powers of Grayskull himself and turned into that right there. <laughs> <laughs> like God Skeletor or Skelly God or whatever. And then uh, he pretty much almost killed the sorceress of Grey Skull or wounded her. And we're going to see that back here. Uh, Man at Arms holding her. No, he says, you know. And Skeletor basically gives Evil Lynn the powers to become the sorceress of Grey Skull. Just the sorceress. This is before she gets a hold of the sword. <laughs> but this is not Skeletor being a, a good guy it, uh, or or good to Evil Lynn. He's basically doing it for his own evil and sexual purposes, as you may have seen in the Netflix Revelation series. But here she is looking awesome. She does look beautiful. So let's see if the action figure looks as beautiful as the artwork. Just look at that. Awesome. Love the muscle tone that they gave Evil Lynn in the series and here as well. Well, there is that bio. If you'd like to pause and read that now, you can. All right, let's go ahead and break her open and check her out over here inside of Castle Grey Skull right after Skeletor has injured the sorceress and makes Evil Lynn the sorceress of Grey Skull. And here we are just inside of Castle Grey Skull. We see Skeletor observing right after he has injured our sorceress of Grey Skull and Man at Arms is comforting her and and Tila is observing all of this and here is Evil Lynn as Skeletor has empowered her with the powers of the new Gray Skull Sorceress. Just check out that beautiful head sculpt. That's We're going to be looking at all of this next as we take a look at Evil Lynn's accessories. First of all, Evil Lynn comes with two sets of hands. These are her weapon holding hands. They have the little details of the fingernails painted on there. And then she also has her kind of cast a spell type hands stretched out hands there and I'm going to even include the cape as an accessory you see those little loops that are around her arms the, the uh, wrist and the bicep of her arms that holds on that cape to her arms and then you can just slide those off to let the cape fall down below which is really cool and then she comes with what we've been used to seeing with Evil in her kind of crystal ball scepter staff thing. And that's basically the exact same one that we got with the other Evil in from Revelation. And so there she is. That's all of her accessories. So now let's take a look at Evil in's articulation. Bringing Evil in a little closer in here to take a closer look at this fabulous looking action figure. Just take a look at that head sculpt again. It's a very beautiful sculpt, I do believe. Very beautiful face. And then has this wild bat-like headdress, just like that was in the cartoon, the uh, series that was on Netflix. You see these almost like tights type, uh, or leotard type uh, almost outfit that's painted onto her legs, midsection up into her bosom area. Now it's worth noting here, and as you see, I've gone ahead and taken these loops off this arm and left them on this arm. You see those little stretchy loops here. That's how you attach the cape to the arm so that it can go along with it. And that looks really neat. I love the fact that they did that. But you can also detach those so that the cape can fold back down behind her. 
and it's that same kind of quality of the tape cape that we've seen on some of the other Masterverse figures that do not have wiring but it's interesting to note that when you remove the head you remove all of it you remove the head the cape the cowl or furry part around her neck and then the back part of it as well the backing back there you remove everything when you remove the head this is all one piece so if you're going to turn her head or have any articulation everything's got to go um, this is all glued together and one piece together so you're not going to be able to really detach that from the way I can see it so far but uh, which is fine I think it's gonna work okay um, I'm sure they could have figured out a way to have kind of you know broken this up a little bit so that you would have some separate pieces and have more options but as it is you're able to really not go up any at all you're gonna have to depend on your torso here to look up any at all so that's not really much of a look up there and then if I can hold the torso I'll show you that you can get her to look down just a little bit but again you're gonna have to rely on, rely on that torso hinge to look down so that just takes us to the torso too you can bend back a little bit and then you can crunch forward a little bit just under the bosom there now you are going to still be able to turn side to side even though it's going to be hindered a little bit by this cowl or this uh you know furry part around her neck and shoulders but you'll be able to go about that far so you're still going to be able to turn her head you're really not going to get much in the way of tilt or expression head tilt there so yeah you're definitely going to be limited there i'm going to use the arm that is not attached to the cape you're going to be able to get pretty much 360 there you're going to be able to get it out from around that that fur around her neck as we said you do have bicep swivel and she will strike better than 90 degrees on that t-pose and then you are going to have double jointed elbows which get really good range I knocked off her scepter out of her hand because you, sh you can see she'll go beyond the 90 degrees by far I mean excellent range there and of course you do get swivel and hinge at the wrist and all these wrists are of course horizontal in the way they are attached also you are going to be able to get a little bit of swivel and side to side motion with that diaphragm so you're going to be able to get some tilt that way more so than with the head you're going to have to depend a lot on this part here to to go back and forth and up and down and side to side and then you can turn a little bit with that too but you also get a waist swivel here you can also swivel at the waist which i almost wish they had not done because it breaks everything up so bad um wish that they had just allowed this to turn a little bit more fluidly and then left this out because um it's just you know you can get to the side about that much and then when you start breaking that up it just looks weird just takes away from that aesthetic this line here but I understand why they did it trying to keep hold of the articulation options but it still adds a little bit of a dilemma all right her legs she is going to get full splits she does have the thigh cut she does have double jointed knees she also has boot cut she'll get full going all the way up and full tiptoes there as well as excellent rockers with the peg hole in the bottom so pretty much these females and they all have pinless joints as masterverse figures do so for the most part she has excellent articulation minus probably let's say the head but better than normal probably in the way of her bosom and diaphragm angles there just to show you what her back looks like still kind of like a skirt thing coming down here supposed to be some skin there in her waist and then the black and then the part that comes off her head still comes down it's kind of like a, a backing there off that helmet and so all of that considered I'll show you very quickly you have to kind of bend her arm back and then grab that little 
stretchy tab piece here and you're gonna have to grab hold of it so that you can kind of open it up a little bit like so and then just kind of work her uh, arm into the first one and you, of course you got to take the hand off to do that and then you do the same with the next little tab put it in there and then voila you have the cape attached and you just kind of position it and then add whichever hand you desire to go along with that and now you can see that you're going to be able to strike that full pose from the back let's look at it there there you go Ta da cool or in the front kind of like she is on the box coming at you there that is really cool so now let's take a look at some comparisons and here are the three evil lens I possess here and you have of course the one we've been looking at here the sorceress evil lens and then you have the revelation evil lens the one that kind of went on the journey with them the despondos um, before she turned well she kind of turned as an ally to Tila and the gang and then back into an evil Lynn uh, later but and then here's the classics evil Lynn which is still one of my favorite incarnations of evil Lynn it has the plastic cape and the long scepter there but looks really cool these scepters are pretty much the same except the one that comes with the sorceress evil Lynn has more of a shine to it here as you can tell there whereas this one has more of a flat gray uh, look to it but it's the same you know translucent uh, crystal ball but uh, they're looking great together and um, of course quite a bit of differences here especially on this new sorceress evil lens headdress but still looking fabulous and think I think she looks great I still can't kind of take my eyes off this uh, line that breaks her waist I do kind of wish they had done something different there but everything else looks pretty uniform and seamless and looks good I do wish they kind of could have done something a little different with her head for the articulation sake even if they had had to attach the cape to the uh, shoulder piece and and left the head separate from it somehow or even made it where that helmet was removable somehow you know just detach it from her head or whatever but I guess that would have cost a lot more in processing in the sense of manufacturing something like this but I love the cape I love the little loops around her arm so all of that said I really think she's a cool action figure I definitely think her face is one of the more beautiful in the sense of our villains uh, in female villains very pretty face with the makeup and just the overall structure and so uh, really pleased with how she came out and that will do it for us I appreciate you joining us today for this Super Dave review please like if you enjoyed it please subscribe if you've not done so and also comment if you have something to share tell us what you think and come back and see us again we have one more in this wave because I don't have too bad yet hope to get a hold of him we'll be looking at Frosta but come back and see us as we'll be having much more to come and action figures galore thank you for joining us and be blessed enjoy some photos in the photo gallery